Watch that mother's heart and the, that care that she had. Karen, I'll never forget it as long as I live. Picture the scene, mom on one side holding hand, Desiree in the bed beside him holding a hand. And there was a the heart of a wife who was loving and caring and carried extra mile all the way to the end. The waiting room was filled with other caring, loving people. An aunt and uncle, a brother, all of us in that atmosphere. It was almost like I saw while there was a mother who had carried him in her womb and a wife who had carried him in her heart, there was a loving God that that this man loved so much that he came and he carried Nathan in his hands. This God loved him so much. And this God was not trying to be cruel. This God was loving. If you were to look at Nathan's life, you could probably say that it looked like it had a lot of losses, loss of health, kidney, two transplants, one given by, by a caring dad, another one, process of that, weak, frail. The last Sunday was here. This is how much he cared about God and about faithfulness. The last Sunday was here, the usher was standing by him, he got in his wallet, pulled out a few dollar bills of what would have been tithe, put it in an envelope. Faithful in every way to this God. And as he processed his journey through life with weakness and sickness and shortcoming, all of a sudden on Monday at 11 o'clock past 11, God moved it over into the gain column. And Paul put it this way. Paul said in Philippians 1.21, For me to live is Christ. All that would have been what I prayed for. I prayed for that miracle all the way to the end. For him to live was Christ. But here it is. But to die was gain. On that morning or that late evening dawning on a Tuesday morning he moved everything that seemed to be loss loss of health loss of, of the values of things that he may have accumulated here all of that as small as it was he moved it into the gain call he's never going to be sick again He'll never have suffering again. He doesn't need a transplant again. Everything has been given to him in gain. I guess you saw on the table out there as we, um, as you came in, that there was uh, little pieces of candy. I understand that he loved the red ones. Boy, I do too. I don't like the lemon too much. But these were... <clears throat> These were his favorite candy. It's called Starburst. Um, Desiree said while they were dating and even in their early marriage that he loved to eat these things. And one of his um, guys he worked with had bought him a big sack, got his sugar count up, and and uh, we kind of joked one at the end of that. Desiree said, well, he'd never have to worry again about he need all the starbursts he wants. That's probably true. But the truth is that these represent so much of who he was. Every starburst is a burst of light, concentrated light that busted forth. And that's what he did. He sent rays of light, of love into each of our hearts. I'll never eat another Starburst without thinking about Nathan. What we did is we left some on the table back there for you. And for Noah, we have a whole big bag full. 
So he's going to make a big killing today on Starburst. In the next few weeks to come will be the tough, challenging time for a wife, for a mom, for a family. But I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to think about this with me. Living in that frail body as he was made it difficult for him to do a lot of things he would love to do. None of that is limited now. I love the brother who got up and said he wasn't a theologian or didn't go to Bible college and all that stuff. Thank God he gave you great truth today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a statement that maybe a theologian would say I'm nuts, but I'm not a theologian and I really don't care what a theologian would say. This is what I know. The Bible says that when we accept Christ as our personal Savior, where does He come to live? In our hearts. In our hearts. That's where He comes. He comes to live right here. Right into Nathan's heart, Jesus came. The Bible also says that He is at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. The Bible also says that for us to be absent in this body. So when, when Nathan moved out of the body on Monday evening late, when he moved out of that body, he went to be with the Lord. To be absent in body is to be present with Christ. Now, if you know Jesus as your personal Savior, as you leave this room, just as sure as you pick up this little piece of candy and you use it as a reminder of this afternoon's ceremony of celebration if you carry Jesus in your heart then every one of us leaving this room will carry a little bit of Nathan with us it will manifest itself in like a story who you'll say I wish I'd got up there and said that or I had a little story I could have told I'm afraid that we wouldn't have had time the whole evening going into dark before we'd been able to tell all the things that he meant. But as we get ready to leave, and I want to ask you to stand with me. I encourage you to pick up a piece of candy out there, as much as there's left. Let it be a reminder. And as we pray one more time, and I know they're taking, they're taping this, so I'm moving out of the camera. That's okay. Nathan worked in our media department. He knows how important it was for us to move cameras around from one place to the other. We didn't have all of our team that's here today. Desiree, let me have your hand. Carrie, let me have your hand. Pray especially for the family today. I thank you for all these that showed up. I thank you that, Lord, you said where two or three are gathered together, that you're in the middle, in the center of where we gather. <clears throat> so, just like I saw that evening, the mom on one side and a wife on the other, and Nathan in the middle. And I've said that when to be absent is body is to be present with you. And if the scripture says that you're in the center that you're where we are gathered, in the middle of where we gather, then in a very real way, as we pray, we know you're there with Nathan, caring for him and loving him. And so I pray that as we leave this place, may we honor you with our... I will truly miss the faithfulness of this young man. And I pray there will be others who will step up to the plate. That this whole room could understand that Nathan was driven not by personality, but by a person, the Lord Jesus. That's what made him the way he was. And that every one of us in this room had the same potential. I pray it, that you'd help this family as they, as they face the next days ahead. In the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. God bless you.